Hi there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. In this video, we complete the Marauder Bomber build by adding on all the extra detail, including the front and tail gunners along with the weapons. You can see where we've left it from the last video with the airframe now complete. And then starting with the underside, I've already glued on the two thrusters. That was a pretty straightforward job. Now we can look at these air flaps. So that is the exterior air flap and then the interior section just has a few circles and then you can see that this will clip into place and then you can see what it would look like from this side where it's got a slight overlap. If you're going to have a flap so they're closed I would just glue them in place now however if you're going to have them ever so slightly open I would actually leave these off because it'd be much easier to paint them up separately and then add them on later on. So I think in terms of these flaps I'm just going to leave them off for now just so it'll be easier to paint up separately and then I can just glue them into position once the kit is predominantly painted in the exact same way that I'm going to do that with the cockpit frames as well. Or we're also dealing with the underside there's a few extra bits of detail that we can add in here so we've got the landing skids and the landing gear depending on whether you want these up or down We've also got the bomber door just here, and then we've got the bomber sights which go in just here. If we just look at the instructions, you can see the Bombay door mentioned here. And then in this one, we've got the landing gear and the landing skids, which show you their position as well as the front ones. And then the bomb sight, which is here, references uh, this small target here, which goes just in front of that Bombay door. So that's the thing I'm going to add now because that's the easiest thing to add. The rest are all down to whether you want it modelled in a certain way. So this is the Bombay targeter. You can see that it's got a very small notch which will just line up with the notch over here. There are a few parts that look a bit like this so make sure you've got the right one before adding it in. So I've now got this glued in place. It's quite easy to have it slightly off centre so just be very careful that it is lined up and it's facing forwards. There's a nice little design touch where this lens here can clearly just pivot up and down as it's finding its target, which is a nice feature that I really like. Next up is to add in the landing gear and skids. Now, there's two ways to do this. If you want your model to be freestanding without a stand, I would suggest having the landing gear down. I've added in the landing gear just temporarily here, but on my kit, I'm going to have it in the other version where the landing gear is up. So let's just show you how it would look with the landing gear down. Each piece of the landing gear is unique. So this is the front piece with the angled hydraulic going backwards. Again, you've got one specific for the left and the right based on the angles of this fuselage. And then you've got this hydraulic pointing backwards as well. Then you've got three of these, which are the skids. So these just need gluing down to here. So they will just need adding on here. You've got some wiggle room in terms of the angle in which these need to be down. So you just need to be very careful that they're all going to be flat together so the model can sit neatly on the table. However, I'm not going to be doing this method so I can take these out. So as I'm not going to be using those pieces, we can just put them to one side and you can add them to your bits box. Instead, we've got these three skids here and we're gonna add them directly onto the model. So you can see how they just fit in and they just need to be aligned up to that top angled lip. So this one would sit there and then the front one just goes in place. Now the skids, when they're in their retracted form, do look a bit on the plain side. So if you did want to add some extra detail to the underside, you could always just add a few tiny strips of plasticard just to add in some extra detail. Those skids are now all securely glued in place. In terms of the underside, there's only one more bit to really look at, and that's the Bombay hatch door. This will just slot in, and that completes it. Now, the Bombay door's been closed like this. Makes sense if you've got those landing gears up, and you just want this as a display piece, and you don't want to mount it to a stand at all. If you do want to mount it to a stand, you've got a small cross piece for the standard flying base, now I wouldn't recommend necessarily using this because this is a really heavy model so that flying stand will be a little bit wobbly. However you've got two options, one is to have the Bombay doors closed and then mount this just here but that is sort of ugly because that will be visible from the model 
or you've got a better option and that is to mount it in here and then to have a flying stand going down into the hatch and then you could split this by cutting it down here and then have those Bombay doors open. Now this would make your flying stand quite short because a lot of the stand is going to be going into the model. If you've kept any of the resin gates when making this model what you could do is take quite a large one and glue it in place and then you could add this on top. So this is much closer just to raise that model up a little bit more. My personal suggestion is to ignore the GW flying bases and to actually make your own from acrylic rod and a larger base. Now that's what I'll be doing, however I'll save that for a separate video which will be coming after this one. For now I'm going to leave the hatch doors to one side. At this stage I would add in the doors, they just go into this side area. So they clip in pretty easily and then I just need to do that on the other side. And then that one goes in there. If you were intending on having this model not on a stand and having its landing position, you could even have the door in the down position where it becomes a small ladder. However, for mine, I'm going to leave this off because I'm going to be doing a conversion project, which I'll talk more about later. Got a few extra bits of gubbins of detail that I thought I would add on. We've got these two lights that go on the front section of the plane. We've got this little piece here which goes at the top just above the cockpit and then we've got this strange little targeter here. Now this little targeter is quite interesting because I couldn't actually see where it belonged. I had a look on the instructions and it doesn't belong anywhere on this plane. And then I had a look through my Imperial Armour modelling masterclass books because there's a few good photos of both the Marauder Bomber and the Marauder Destroyer in there. And actually this piece comes from the Marauder Destroyer kit. So this sits on the back and is the target for the tail guns which are those twin assault cannons. So that was interesting to note. So if you also have this in your Marauder Bomber kit feel free to ignore it and put it in your bits box. Instead let's get on with adding these little bits of detail onto the plane. So let's take this one first of all. This piece here just attaches to the top of the cockpit frame. However, these two bits here are meant to line up with some cables on top of the bomber. So let's bring that in as well. So if I just add in the cockpit frame and the top sight, you can see how it's all meant to fit together. You can see a little cable running from this aerial into that cylindrical section of the top sight. And oddly, on the instructions, there's another cable running along from this piece that then bends up into this little square bit just here. It's odd that that bit is completely smooth, so it's not a mold defect but it must be something that they've removed from the mould as they've redone these over time. And also, interestingly, this little piece here has obviously snapped off. Um, it's just a sort of triangular piece, so I might replicate that in Plasticard. And I can also replicate that cable that's missing just with a small bit of Plasticard rod that's very small. Uh, so those two bits are quite easy. In the meantime, though, I'm just going to glue this piece down. So that piece is now glued into the cockpit. And again, we're going to leave that cockpit for a sub-assembly while we're painting. I'll go in and probably fix up that detail at a later date. But for now, we can move on to those lights. You can see just on the instructions that the lights go onto the side of that uh, front housing. Now, the instructions aren't particularly visible. So if I bring in my Imperial Armour Modelling Masterclass Volume 1, book you can see it in much more detail so this goes bang in the center and then this top section is going along that ridge so that will give us a good indication of where to add it onto the plane if we look at them top down you notice there's a small chamfer on that light so that will help you line it up when you're trying to get this central position in and then obviously based on the illustration we know that that top notch needs to line up with this edge these two lights are now glued in place. So this is what the left hand light looks like. And then if I just spin it around, you can see what the right hand one looks like as well. And then this is just a little view from the underside. Next up is the front and rear turret sections. So we've got the front mounting here for this kind of gun ball. The back one is already glued in place on the bomber. So I'll walk you through how this all works with the front piece because both are pretty identical. So you've got a rear component, which is this section, and as you can see that this will just fit in here and allow the whole turret section to swivel around. 
Next up we need to add in the gunnet seat which just clips into these little notches on the sides. So that just fits in, it's a bit of a tight squeeze. This should then be able to pivot up and down so the guns can move around. Then you can add in your gunner who will sit in just there. Then you want to add in the frame, which is this one here. And then he will be enclosed. Then you just need to add in either of the guns. So for the rear turret, you're going to be adding in the heavy bolters. So they will just plug into here. So I've added in the heavy bolters, although they don't fit very snugly, so they're quite loose and will be prone to falling out. But this will just give you a rough idea of what it will look like. And then we can take these out. And for the front turret, you just need to add in the LAS cannons, which will just, again, plug into that hole. What I've started to do is to actually magnetise the LAS cannon in place, so I'm not relying on that plug. Now that's an optional extra you don't really need to do because once this is all painted you'll probably glue this in place. However I'll be doing a conversion project to turn the Marauder Bomber into the Marauder Destroyer so I want to be able to swap these weapons out so it can be played as both the Bomber or the Destroyer depending on what weapons you load it out with. So if we put him to one side for a second the holes are conveniently 4mm wide, so I've just managed to glue a couple of magnets in. Now what I actually did is I drilled it out a little bit further, just so I can get a stack of several magnets, and then ensure that I've got a really nice flush finish. And then with my magnetised LAS cannons, they can just snap in place. And then if I want to swap them out for something else, such as an auto cannon, I can do that quite easily. Now that is something I will talk about more in a separate video, on how to convert the bomber into the destroyer. But for now, let's carry on with this. Now, if we assume that this turret is complete, how does it fit onto the bomber? So this is the front one. The turret ball will just fit in there and can rotate around. Now, to keep it in place, you'll need to use one of these two targeters, which have a pin. So this larger one is for the front turret. And what you'll want to do is glue along here, but not glue that pin in especially if you want to be able to rotate the turret. So by having that piece glued in, the turret should now be free to swivel around, but it won't be able to come out either. However, this is going to have to be a sub-assembly, so I'm going to have to paint up all of these parts before gluing it all together. The frames will need the Perspex sheet adding in, so I want to do that once this frame has been painted. The only thing I would suggest gluing at this stage is probably the gunner to the seat, that's just so you don't have to bother painting any of the seat detail because that is actually going to all be covered up. And then it's just a matter of painting up this interior detail as well. But remember, most of that won't really be visible. It will just be that top section. I'm going to magnetise these sections first, then I'll glue him in place. So with this guy glued in place, it might be quite easy to get him confused with the guy on the left-hand side. Now he is the top turret gunner, and he comes pre-moulded into his seat. Now while he looks really similar, he's actually slightly smaller in size. So that's how we tell these two pieces apart. Next up is this top turret gunner here. It's quite a simple build, so it won't take too long to do. The pieces that you'll need are two of the heavy bolters. There's two sets, and they're exactly identical. Then you'll need the top turret gunner in the seat. He's the one that's already pre-moulded into the seat, unlike the others which need gluing in place. And as you can see, I've already magnetised it with 4mm magnets. And that was just a matter of simply gluing them directly into the hole that was already there. And then it was just a matter of drilling out a 4mm hole and just adding in that 4mm magnet into the back of the heavy bolter. The other two parts for the top turret is the bottom, which is this piece here as well as the turret top. Just to reiterate that this one is a slightly different design from the front and rear gun frames. Just bear that in mind. The other ones won't fit, so if you are struggling, just make sure you've got the right one. These all fit together quite easily. You want to take your base, then you want to drop the gunner in, making sure that this square area here is where his feet goes, so he can tip up to be upright, or you can have him lying on his back with the guns pointing upwards. Then the frame just gets added on, and then lastly you can add in your two heavy bolters. And the gun should still be able to pivot up and down quite nicely. 
and it will even stay in whichever position you want. Then it's just a matter of taking this and dropping it into this hole here. You'll notice that you've got a peg here which will just help position it. With that in place it can still rotate relatively freely from side to side. Now there's no reason to actually glue this piece in because of the pin allows you to move it freely and in terms of storing and transporting it might be best off that you keep that all separate. And for the same reasons I mentioned before with the front and rear turret, for example because of the gunner as well as the canopy windows that I need to add in, I'm going to keep all of these parts separate for painting. So I can just dismantle this, take this piece out, and then all these five pieces are going to be painted up separately. I'm now at the stage where I've completed every individual build that I need to at this stage because all the individual parts that I haven't added to the bonnet at this stage will be part of a sub-assembly and I will be painting them up separately before then gluing them to the model. So what I've done is I've done a complete dry fit of all of those components so you can see what the finished bomber should look like. Now unfortunately I can't fit it all within the frame because it's just that big but I'll try and show you all the key components so you haven't missed anything. At the front I've added in the pilot and the navigator along with this top cockpit and added in this whole ball turret piece along with this section here along with the two side doors. On the wing I've added in the flaps as well as the two engines and on the rear I've added in that ball piece and not forgetting that this ball piece here is held in place by that pin just there. Likewise the front one has a similar pin holding that piece in place which allows it to swivel around. And on the underside I've just added in that bomber hatch. On the final piece I'm not going to have this in the exact same way because I've got to add in the flyer stand. However the flyer stand I'll do as a completely separate video so keep a lookout for that in the future. On the middle of the fuselage I've added in the top turret which I just talked about. You'll notice this section here where I've added in some plastic card pieces. Now this piece here is clearly some kind of antennae or aerial. Now that had snapped off at some point so I had just recreated it with some plastic card. Then there's also these two bits of wiring. Now interestingly those wires aren't moulded onto the model but looking back through the old Imperial Armour Modelling Masterclass book you can clearly see those wires visible and you can clearly see how it would fit into the back of this target array. So it's a little odd that that detail is now no longer on the model so I simply just use some plastic card rod which you can easily bend and glue into place just to recreate that detail. Anyway I just thought I would point that bit out because that's the only bit of sort of extra modelling detail that I've added in. You can also see that I've done some green stuffing along the engines where there were some gaps and just along here to clean up those seam lines. So that's all the bits that go into making up the Marauder Bomber. In general, it's been quite easy to build and relatively quick as well. It's definitely been a lot easier to put together than some of the other Forge Rod models. I would say the most difficult step was pinning the wings to the fuselage just to make sure that they are nice and secure. And if I had to give a criticism to the kit, there's probably only two. The first one is that the canopy pieces aren't made of clear resin like some of the newer models, such as the Avenger Fighter. It'd be nice if the windows were actually modelled on the kit. However, I'm sure I'll cope with a little plastic sheet that they gave me to create the windows. It'd be interesting to see how I get on with that once the model is painted up. Lastly, the flying stand isn't at all sufficient, so I've gone and I've bought my own pieces to create my own. Now, as I might have mentioned earlier, I'm actually going to be converting this into a Marauder Destroyer and magnetising all the weapons so it can be played both as a bomber or as the Marauder Destroyer. If you're interested in seeing how that's done, I'll be doing it in a separate video, so keep an eye out for that in the future. Likewise, I'm also hoping to do a paint video showing you the process of how I paint this all up. And with a bit of luck, there'll also be a showcase video where I'll show off the fully painted model. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. To keep notified of future tutorial videos, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications. And lastly, if you'd like to support this channel, then head over to Patreon, where you can help this channel grow for as little as $2 a month. Until the next time, take care.